Okay, so boys and girls, this is like your mock assessment that you're getting tomorrow. It's just a sample of what you might see. So let's go in order here and try and solve the first question. But before we start solving any questions, it is so important that you read the question carefully to, f to find out what it is asking you to do. Especially in this unit, because we've covered five different um, topics in number sense. We've covered fractions, decimals, uh, percent, ratio, and rate. That is a lot of information to look at. So it, it's extra important that you highlight keywords. Grade six is when you're writing EQAO in about a month that you read the question and highlight the important uh, information from it. What is it asking you to do? If you don't do that, you might get confused and answer the question in an incorrect way. And then you won't get the opportunity to get the full marks, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna model highlighting the important information and answering it. So let's start with the first one. After two hours, five hours, and seven hours of driving, 260 kilometers, 650 kilometers, and 890 kilometers of traveled. Did the three drivers travel at the same rate? So what is the important information? Let's start with that. Yes. So two hours, um, five hours, seven hours, and a Okay, so the way this is worded, I, I saw some of you were confused. I get it. But how many drivers were there? What does the question say? There, was three drivers. there were three drivers. So that means, I, do you think that this is driver number one, driver number two, driver number three? And then this is distance number one, distance number two, distance number three. So that's how I set it up. So I'm going to maybe use a different color to highlight the three different drivers. Okay. That way it's just a little bit easier to help us sort it. So what do I have to do? What is this question asking me to do? What is it asking me to do? What am I looking for? Yeah. Uh, the same, the same time that the in distance is. Same. So what's that called? Uh, what's it called? Rate? It's called rate, and that's what we're looking for. So what rate should I be looking for? What rate do I need to look for, or how can I solve this problem? What are, What are the steps I can take to solve this particular problem? Is that? Why why are you dividing two sixty by two? Because like you have to do it half of two. Not in half. What is she trying to tell us? To go to find out how fast they're going per hour. So she's trying to find out how fast they're traveling in one hour. So that is rate when you try to break it down to make the unit the same. So in this case it's one hour. You could have done it in another way, thirty five hours or or 70 hours you could have if, if it works but we're let's look at it in one hour so for this one 260 divided by 2 is how much if this number is too hard try doing 26 divided by 2 if you have 26 cookies and you give them to two students equally how many cookies does each student get they get 13 so if this is 13 this has to be 130. We just reintroduce the zero back. So driver number one travels 130 kilometers per hour. And that slash means per hour. Let's look at the second driver. 650. Let's match the colors. 650. How much would I divide 650 by? Because we've established this rate and we're trying to find it for one hour. By five hours, correct. So if 650 divided by five is too difficult, try 65 divided by five. What is 65 divided by five? It's 13, correct. And this would be 130. This one's also 130 kilometers per hour. Okay, and let's look at the last one. We have 890 divided by 7. 890 divided by 7. 
do 89 divided by 7. This is even tricky for me. I'd have to take out the calculator. But what's the? what did you guys get for this one? Sorry? 128. So I bet this was 12.8. This is 128. So do we have our answer? Did We do have our answer. So what is it? Did the three drivers travel at the same rate? In this case, were they all going the same speed? No, they weren't. Because these... One and two were going 130, and the last driver was going 128. <laughs> Let's look at question number two. Atia spent $37.38 for 42 liters of gas. At that rate, could she get another 40 liters of gas for less than $35? There's a clue in the question about what it wants you to do. What math concept does this want you to do? And that is called what? What's the magical math word when you're trying to find out what one is? It's rate. So let's find out how much one liter costs. What do I have to do to solve how much one liter is? My head in the back. Hold on. Let me say that one more time. Okay. Point eighty nine zero decimal eighty nine. <coughs> so how much money is that? Zero point eighty nine. What is that in money? So it's eighty nine cents a liter. So now the question becomes: Can she get another forty liters for less than thirty five dollars? What do I need to do now? I need to do something now. What do I need to do? What do I multiply by 40? What do I need to multiply 40 by, Atiyah? And why are you multiplying it by 0 0.89? That's how much gas costs. I don't know what it costs this morning, but it's 89 cents a liter. You have to multiply this by 40. And that'll give you... Sorry, how much? $35.60. So the answer is no, she cannot. But she can get 39 liters of gas. And then she'll have some money left over. Maybe to buy, I don't know, a sour key, right? At the, at the gas station, who knows? Okay. Mr. C divided 25 students into, th into five equal groups, each with three girls. How many boys are in the class? For before, we t before you tell me the answer, I'm not interested in the answer right now. What is this? What math concept is this? Who's saying? Ratio. This is ratio. Okay, so 25 students, five equal groups, three girls. So I'm looking for how many boys. Tell me how to do this. Tahir. Do do Come a little closer so I can hear you because I, I can't hear you. Okay. Three times five equals 15. Okay, so there's 10 boys in the class. So then what would the ratio be? I know it didn't ask the ratio, but what is the ratio of girls to boys per group? Watch it. Sorry? 25 to 15 is a misconception because you're giving me the total students to girls. I want girls to boys. So what is the ratio of girls to boys? 15 to nine? Very close. Did you count yourself in this? 15 to 10. So you got to count yourself too, right? So if the ratio is 15 to 10, okay, so this is girls and boys. Remember, your, where, where did Wajid's misconception come from? Why did he say 25? Because I think I know why he said it, 
Let's see if we <laughs> can understand why he said it. I think so because there were 25 students. So he's thinking, what is he thinking? He's not thinking ratios, but he's thinking of what mathematical concept? What did he mix up? Fraction. Exactly. He mixed up fractions. So now, because there's five groups, if I asked you right now, what are the ratio? What is the ratio between from girls to boys per group? Can you give me that answer? Do we even have a clue of how many girls are in each group? So they said that you didn't do five groups. Yes. Twenty-five divided by five. So five per group. And they also tell you that there are three girls. Right there. Each so? So each girls you five Girls to boys. So if there's five people per group and there's three girls, the boys has to be two in this situation. Okay, Aliyah. Okay, how did you get your answer? Okay. Okay. So you didn't even bother with a lot of this stuff. So you figured out right away this was your first step, and you knew that there was three girls. So you knew if there's five, it has to be two. And then you took this and you multiplied it by five, you said? Yeah. Because there's five groups. And it gave you a total. I know this looks a little different than what you're used to. 15 to 10. That's another way to do it. Kind of like the fraction method. And, but that's where this confusion happened with the fraction method. Remember, in the fraction method, your denominator is the total pieces for each part. With this information, am I able to determine the percentage of girls in the class or not? I know this is a side question, but can I determine the percentage of girls and boys in this class? Syrah. Yes, you can. So you know that there's 25 students in this photo? So you know that there's 15 girls? So 15 over 25. And then I know that percent has to equal up to 100. Okay. So I multiply 25 by 4 and 15 by 4. Because whatever you do, whatever you do to the nominator, you have to take the numerator. Excellent. And then I got 70 over 100. How about 60 over 100? 60 over 100? Sounds good to me. And I got 60 over 100. So 60% okay. girls and 40% boys. Because percent is always out of? Perfect. Okay, so here's the next question. Seven girls are sharing three cheese pizzas. And three boys are sharing one vegetarian pizza. Who gets more pizza? A boy or a girl? I'm very interested to see your answers for this one. Taha. Yeah. So we got more. Did anyone get a different answer? I'll be honest with you, when I solved this, I did not solve it like this. But that's okay. The 
Can I see it? Let's come up and show it. Okay. So the girls would get more. You're saying the girls would get more. Yeah, because we knew that the boys had, like, there was three boys, so we, um, so we made it, like, equal for the boys. So we made the pizza three slices each pizza. So, and there's seven girls. So we, um, first, each girl would get one third, and there would be two thirds left of that pizza, one pizza. And, uh, like, we split it in, like, into seven slices again. Oh, I see what you did here. So if we look at the way the girls solved it, they drew the fractions out. So what they did here is they, they you put three slices per pizza. Yeah. Why did you choose three slices per pizza? Because we knew that um, for the boys, they had three boys there, so we made it equal to the girls and the boys. So you decided because the boys would <laughs> probably sh eat a whole pizza and split it into three because they only got one. So you made it so that the numbers are even, right? So you cut the slices evenly. So <coughs> what the girls did here, as you can see, they cut the pizza into three slices. And why did you cut into three slices? Okay, so for the boys. So the boys on one pizza, they get three slices. So then for the girls, they cut it into three slices as well. So when you cut three pizzas into three slices for each pizza, how many total slices would there be for three pizzas? Mary, there's nine. So the girls get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then Aaliyah, you did something very interesting here. Can you explain this to us, what your group did? So one seventh per, that's what I noticed here. So there was two thirds left and you cut the two thirds into seven slices. So, so now the girls get, so the boys get one third of a pizza, right? The girls get one third plus a seventh. The girls get more pizza. Do you think you can solve this using percentages as well and decimals? <coughs> Absolutely. The boys get 33 or 33%. And the girls, you'd have to do 1 over 3 plus 1 over 7. What's 1 over 3 plus 1 over 7? What do I need to do here? Does anyone remember what we need to do? You may need to know this tomorrow. Hint, hint. What do you do when you're adding fractions? What what must happen here, Zyra? So the denominator needs to be the same. What's the denominator going to be here? You, someone said LCM. Who said LCM? You got to find the lowest common multiple. In this case, what's the lowest common multiple of 3 and 7, Taha? 21. It's 21. So from 3, how do you get to 21 if you're multiplying? Seven. Multiply by 7. And then from 7, how do you get to 21 when you multiply? Multiply by 3, good. So the denominator is 21. So 7 plus, sorry, whoops, plus 3 equals 10 over 21. And if you divide 10 by 21, let's see here. It gives you about a decimal of 0 0.48, which is 48%. Ta-da. There are about 105 males born in Canada for every 100 females. In Calgary, there were about 15,000 births in 2014. About how many of these babies were boys? So how would I do this? First of all, what is it asking me to figure out? This is this can be a ratio question. So what is the ratio here? Tell me the ratio. So if we did a ratio, 105 to 100. Is there another way I can solve this? Yes. So you can turn that into a fraction. Okay. Let me pause you for a second. What I forgot to 
highlight here is what is the question asking us to figure out? What's it asking us to figure out? So how many boys were born, right? Yeah. So here we have 105 boys or males, whatever, same thing, right? What do I do now? I know 105 males are born for every 100 girls. Got the ratio. What do I need to do now? Ilias. Okay. And then I guess and check by multiplying 205 from 10 and then I did 20, 30. Okay, so hold on. You got 205. Yeah. What did you do with this 205? You said you multiplied. I multiplied it. But why did you need this total? To what concept are you using? When you're finding <laughs> this total, what is the purpose of you finding this total right now? What could you use it for? It, this will eliminate your guess and check. Because guess and check can be time consuming. What can we do now that we have a total of 205? What math concept do we need when we have a total number? <coughs> Fraction. So if this is your total, is it not your, what is it, your numerator or your denominator? denominator. It's your denominator. So what am I trying to find out again? How many what? How, more specifically, how many what? How many boys? How many boys were born in the ratio? What does it say? So then our numerator is 105. What are we trying to figure out though? Yeah. Okay, before you start the guess and check, when it's set up like this in fractions, what, what can we do to solve this answer? To eliminate guess and check right away. What strategy have you been taught that solves this right away? No guess and check, makes life a little easier. It's, star it's staring right at you, boys and girls. We've done this a few times. He says cross multiplication. Any disagreement? I think he's pretty right. So when you cross multiply, 105 <laughs> times 1,500. Now we're not going to draw the lines for this one. It would take too long. But again, you can use your calculator for this. 105 times 15,000. <coughs> that gives us a big number of 1.575 million. <laughs> and then what do you do after you multiply this? You gotta go this way, do what? Divide. divide. So we have to divide this by 205. Comes up with an answer. It's not an exact answer, but it's 7,683. Okay? So you could say about 7,683 children were boys. Okay? Is there another way we can do this? Any guesses? Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick. I think you guys might have forgotten this one, or you just simply didn't know how to apply it. So, I like getting the fraction. Great idea with the fraction. Okay? What else can I figure out with a fraction? Did the cross multiplying, what else does a fraction tell us to do? Or what other information does a fraction give us? When you look at this fraction, how about this? Let's make it a little bit easier. What information does this fraction give us? What does 1 over 4 give us? Minaho. Say that one more time. Okay, so this is 1 quarter. What other information does 1 over 4 give us? 25%. How did you know that? Because to get to 100 Four okay. Love the answer. What else does this fraction give us? 
gives us another piece of information that we could use. Tire. It gives us 0 decimal 25. How did you get that? Okay, cool, perfect. Now this here, if we follow the same structure here, okay, it doesn't give us a quarter. We're not gonna say 105, 200 fifths. Let's just call it words, okay, because here are the words. This is percent. Can I figure out the percentage here? This one here is decimal. Can I figure out the decimal? Is it possible? to figure out what the decimal is here? Think of what we did to figure out the decimal in this one. How would you figure out the decimal here? What do you have to do to figure out the decimal? Tired? 105 divided by 205. 105, let's do it right this time. Look at, that gives us an <laughs> odd decimal. 0 decimal 51. So if the decimal is 0 0.51, what is the percent? Isha? 51%. So now, if I took the total number of kids born, 15,000, and I multiplied it by this long answer, I get the same answer. The answer is 7,683. So if you <coughs> solve it by finding the decimal first and then multiplying it by the total, you get the same answer. So that's the other way of doing it. 